Before I read what I want to read, I want you to go with me so long to the book of Isaiah. And open your Bible there, put your, your marker in there that Granny gave you for Christmas. Just take your little bookmark, whatever it is that you use, and put it there at Isaiah 14. Let's put a place marker in there. And uh, those of you who are very fast, if you've already got your place marker in Isaiah 14, then page over a couple of blocks to the right, and then you go into Ezekiel 28, and you put a place marker in there quickly. So Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. I know some of you who study the Bible, you will know when I go to Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, you know exactly what I'm going to be talking about. But I'm not going to preach on that today. I'm just going to mention it. You just keep those placeholders there. Over the past, I would say over the past two weeks, but more so over the past week, I've had incredible prophetic dreams. And I shared the one with, uh, with, with, with Pastor Joe and some brothers. And uh, that's, that's the great thing about being in a ministry that runs really on the apostolic and the prophetic, is that you have brothers around you who can then at that point actually give insight into the interpretation of that. The dream I want to share with you now that I had, now listen, in your wildest imagination, you cannot think up something like this. It is actually too, it's too intricate, it is too detailed for my mind to conjure up things like that. So. Um, me being a, a late nighter and a, and a not so early riser, um, I, I like to, when I sleep, is to sleep. I think that's the whole point of it. So for me to wake up 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning is not normal. It is just not normal. That's been happening over the past, over the past two weeks for a couple of nights. Then the Lord says to me, I want you to pray. 3 o'clock in the morning. What you amen in your <laughs> He's getting me to pray, and I'm going, Lord, really? And, and, and I, I, I pray, and then I fall asleep. Here's what happens. Now, what I'm sharing with you now has not happened to me before. In the whole of my 25 years I've been on this earth. <laughs> it hasn't happened to me. So it's something new. So it's... It's so real to me right now, and that's why I want to share it with you today. The Lord says, I want you to share this with the people, because this is where it's going. After that praying, sometimes for an hour that I will pray, the Lord gives me incredible prophetic dreams. That I wake up and I go, what? It's like I'm, I'm, it's in living colors. It's like I'm standing here this morning. The first dream I had, when this range started, there are others that's more for me. And, and actually for family and so forth, so I won't be sharing that. But the first one I had was, Des and I were at this resort, but it was one of those exquisite places. Something that uh, perhaps somebody like Saul Kirsner could think about. You know, with their wild imaginations. It was a place like, it was magnificent. And we were coming down this cobbled paving area, and there was a huge pool in front of us. More, <laughs> It wasn't really a dam, it was more like a pool and the water was crystal clear. And as we were coming down, I looked and I saw these fish swimming in, in, in this pond, this, this pool. And there were beautiful rocks in it and it was absolutely magnificent. And when I saw the fish, I got so excited. They were large fish. It was larger than what I thought that pool could handle. And I saw the fish swimming and they were around the rocks and I said to Des, look at the fish. She wasn't too interested in the fish. <laughs> I love fish. Hey, Michael. Love the fish. So I'm looking at the fish swimming all around. And as I'm going down, I feel the Spirit of God say to me, I want you to turn over to the left-hand side. And they had like a cover over, like a concrete, like, a, like stadiums had, but not that big, about the, the size of this room. And I walked underneath. And underneath, there were also the rocks, and there were the, the fish swimming. And there were... There was a rack of like these test tubes with different colored liquids in it. Like, but beautiful colors like yellow and green and orange and purple and blue and turquoise. All the colors were stacked in this rack of the, of this, uh, with the test tubes. And I saw people come over, take syringes, put it into these test tubes, extract the liquid from it, fold the syringes and they would go into the pool and, and, and put the, the, the liquid into the pool. The moment the liquid went into the pool, it became like, 
like live little strings, like little white live strings, and it would swim in the water and it would affect the fish. Now, I mean, some of you are already, uh, is he okay this morning? <laughs> what does he take for breakfast? And, and, and each person would come and extract the liquid and it, it, uh, inject it into the water and it would affect the fish. And I felt the spirit of the Lord say to me, you have to stop this. So I took a syringe and I went across and it just had to be the blue liquid, eh? My favorite color. So I went over to the blue liquid. Blue also speaks of royalty. Blue and purple is the color of God. So I put the syringe in there. I didn't think of it at that time. I extracted it. Now listen to this, what happened. As I injected this liquid into the water, these little white strings came out and started forming and shaping into three persons. One here, one in the middle, and one on the other side. And as they were forming, they all three went and stood like this, like with their arms folded. And somebody came and said, but I've got to stop this, of what I just did. So he grabbed one of the test tubes again, extracted liquid, but very fast. He was a bit frantic to stop what this, uh, these three figures are now representing in the water. And I'll tell you just now, maybe some of you have an idea already. And he took the liquid again and he spurted it back into the water. But as these things started moving in the water, the first person grabbed it and broke, it, broke its back. The one that managed to come past this one, the second one grabbed and broke its back. And the ones that escaped, the first and the second, the third person took it and broke it. And it had no effect on the fish anymore. What a dream. Thank you, sir. What a dream. <laughs> then I dreamed, listen to this, and Pastor Jonas, I said, helped me a lot with the interpretation. After that, I dreamt, Des and myself were in a large church. And had three tiers like this, or three sections where people were seated. And Des and I were walking, I even saw what I had on, and I, we were walking in and among the people, just praying for people, blessing them, loving them. And the service was finished, and the people were busy coming out, and we just loved the people. What did you see in the dreams? And I know some of you, the, the minds are going, and all the gears and all that. What has happened is that in the days that we are living in now, there has been so much influences on the Church of Christ. There has been so many teachings that has gone into people. There have been, there have been so many, and I'm going to say it as it is, false doctrines that have gone out there that has affected the fish of the Kingdom of God. One thing, and these brethren will tell you, that I am emphatic about, and it's truth. What does the Bible say? Not what your Court Healer says, or this professor, or that doctor, or this uh, um, guy that's brought out 50 books already. Not what do they say. What does the Bible say? What's in the word for God? So the Lord showed me that when I took the blue liquid and I injected it into the water, it partnered with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Did you? I wonder if you saw that as I explained it. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as they came again with the false doctrines, the Father grabbed it, Jesus grabbed it, and the Holy Spirit grabbed it, and they broke its back. To the point that it made for a healthy church that was friendly and vibrant and going with the things of God. This is what's busy happening. Now do not quote that scripture to me, and in the old days, Old men shall dream dreams. Thou shalt not quote that. <laughs> so, what is happening is that there's a lot of prophetic revelation that's being revealed. Can I ask, just by a show of hands, how many of you found over the past couple of days, or maybe even weeks, that the Lord has started revealing some prophetic stuff to you? Can I see your hands, please? Raise your hands. That's very encouraging. Amen. When I looked at this and I saw how God is busy bringing, God is busy bringing, I would say He's actually, what is that word? He's bringing things together. He's, he's, busy, he's busy bringing it into a closer circle. God is busy bringing it in a more constructive place than have it being loose all over the show. Now, I want to read a portion of Scripture this morning. This is where the Lord took me. Like I said, guys, please, this morning, I'm not going to preach on it. I know it's a subject that many want to hear about, but I'm not going to preach it. I'm just going to share it quickly. In Isaiah 14, I know you found it by now, from verse 12, it says, 
How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. How does he weaken nations? How does he do that? Through his false teachings, through his own propaganda, through his influences, through his demonic um, cohorts right throughout the earth and the globe right now. Because he said in his own heart, this is where it started, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. On the farther sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And then he makes a statement, even these other ones, possibly, I don't know, it was very bad to say those, but this one he should not have made. And he said, I will be like the Most High. Verse 15 says, Yet you shall be brought down to, the, to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who will gaze at you and consider you will be saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? You say to me, why did you read that? Because I want to say to you, when we want to talk about the prophetic rising and prophetic praise that is busy rising in, in the Church of Christ across this country and across the world right now, I want to say to you, there is one being that is extremely jealous of the worship and the praise that is being released by the kingdom of God right now for the kingdom of God. Worship is taking on a different dimension. Those of you who are into music here who are into worship, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's going in a new dimension. It's going in a new dimension. Guys, you're going to find yourself. Listen to me. You're going to find yourself. There are some of you here. You don't even play an instrument. You're going to sit in a restaurant and you're going to be talking with friends. And, so, and God's going to drop a song in your heart. It's going to be a new song. You're going to drive in your car and you're going to sing a song and you've never sung before. It's going to be a prophetic revelatory song for you for your life. And why is God doing this right now? Why is this happening? It's because of the fact that people are caught up in the things of the daily business of life. And I'm saying to you, in the middle of things, hear what I'm saying here at this church today. In the middle of your activities, God's going to stop, start dropping things in your spirit. Why? Because it's going to be wow moments. You're going to sit with people sometimes and say, what? I just received something from the Lord. God is amplifying is accelerating things in the spirit right now into the hearts of his people you you know here yeah, those of you who've been coming here for a while you know we always say to you what we see what we believe god is busy doing so that we can pre-warn you and, and pre-warn in a good way to say to you look out for this we do believe this is busy happening and maybe watch out for that because that's a place not to go but stay strong on these lines that we are ministering to you now go over quickly to to isaiah excuse me ezekiel 28 ezekiel in the 28th chapter and also the reason why i'm reading these scriptures is i am going to be ministering on this soon because again the lord has revealed some stuff that i need to share with you but look at this ezekiel 28 and isaiah 14 our sister chapters they they run they run coherent with one another they are together you you need to read the one with the other but we're only going to read a few verses this is what lucifer or then satan was all about in his creative creative state before his fall ezekiel 28 from verse 12 son of man take up a lamentation for the king of tyre and say to him thus says the lord god you were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty you were in Eden, the garden of God. And by the way, this is talking about Lucifer. It's not talking about the king of Tyre of, of, uh, um, in, in this sense. It's only making a, a reference point. Because the king of Tyre was never in the garden of Eden, okay? In the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, sapphire, turquoise, emerald, and gold. By the way, do you know that in the, in the garden of Eden, the rivers that were there, one was the Euphrates, do you know that the Bible says that the one river had all precious stones in it? And it, yes, some of them, it was mentioning some of them, you know, the diamonds and the pearls and the, and the emeralds and the jaspers and the amethyst and whatever. Why were those in the rivers? Why, why do you think? 
God knew there was going to be a woman. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Like I said, I'm not going to preach on it. I'm going to explain that later on when we, we, we minister on this. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created. Until iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading. Oh, I wish I could. Can, can I just mention this one? Is this okay if I just go and get it? And I, I, won't, I won't teach the rest this morning on it. But I'll come back to it now because that's a good one. You became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. I love it when God says, and I destroyed you. <laughs> Did you get that? I destroyed you. Not I gave you a club. I destroyed you. It's a past tense action indicating that the time of action has already transpired with future results. You say, where did you get that from? That's basically from study. When you understand what the Bible is saying when it comes to these things. Now, when it says there, and you asked for it because I could see it on your faces. When it says there, by the abundance of your trading, 